Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about The Twilight Zone, Season 2, Episode 4. It's called Ovation. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. And just to sort of, I'll put it bluntly, uh, this episode does not deserve anything remotely related to a, an ovation, standing or otherwise. Uh, we're in the trenches now. Uh, Tara, how, how did you feel about ovation? Okay, so I understand the themes. Mm -hmm. See where it's going with it. Um, my biggest problem with the episode is that it's just there's such an obvious like event that happens and it takes the character so long to figure it out but the audience is like way ahead of her and there's this like really extended long scene where it's just kind of boring anyway i just it's not that good like it's it's not terrible but like it's not good that's one way of putting it. Uh, so this episode is about uh, uh, Jasmine, uh, who's played by Johnny Smollett, who is a you know, busker. She's got dreams of being a musician, and she's you know she plays a guitar. And the episode starts with this this famous performer who's in this photo shoot uh, for something, and you know the the, the photographer's like, ah, oh, you you're an octopus about to kill your prey or something. That was the weird direction he gave. Uh, she's mm -hmm. doing all the pouty lips and all the rest of it. And then she's outside, she's got sunglasses on, she's got a hood up, she's obviously trying not to be recognised, and she finds Jasmine, and she's like, oh, you're pretty good, you know, and Jasmine's like, oh, I'm a big fan of yours, like, oh, I mean, what do you, what do you want from this? Like, well, I want what you have. She's like, oh, you do? And she gives her this coin, or pendant, or whatever, uh, and then just walks onto the road and lets herself be hit by a bus. That part got me, actually. Yeah. Okay. Do you know it's funny, like, I feel like the first time I ever saw that, it got me good. But it there's so yeah. many things that have Final used the, destination. Su the surprise bus hit now that I, I almost, every time there's a character who walks onto a road like this, I'm always like, it's almost more surprising when it doesn't happen. And I'm like, oh, they didn't die. <laughs> well, oh. I was surprised by this. It got me. Uh, I was eating breakfast and I almost dropped my bowl. <laughs> it's scary. Just so, didn't expect it. So, basically... The, the 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 coin the the pendant it is a magical item which basically makes everyone who witnesses her perform love her and give her a literal ovation uh to the point where once she like goes on to perform in this tv show the second time because you know this guy sees her and says hey come on our talent show and maybe you'll win uh to the point where the second time she goes on the show she literally can't get through the second line of the song before people start clapping and then after that, like, she's actually messing up and she's missing chords and she's, like, singing off key and people are still clapping mm -hmm. ferociously. They're not even listening to her. Um, and it becomes about this kind of rising obsession where everyone's just obsessed with her and it becomes this burden. Uh, but she's also doesn't want to give it up. She still get a taste for it. Uh, I mean, the themes here are, are, are blatantly kind of obvious. It's, you know, the, the thirst for th yeah. th fame beyond anything else and then kind of all the, the temptation of not being able to let it go and yeah you know, what it does to your family or loved one hold on i've got a you know shuttle craft landing outside my door there <laughs> we go <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's, it does that thing where it takes the idea and turns it up to 11 uh also <laughs> accelerates it by about a thousand <laughs> as well where because you've got multiple aspects of this where she gets to a point where it's not about her art anymore and it's just about kind of this persona that she's created. Uh, but of course, because of the magic Twilight Zone element, she gets there in a day. <laughs> it's not just like anything else. Um, yeah. And then she thirsts, and then she's like a has-been because she gives it up and she throws the coin away and she's like enraged by the fact that she's now this this nobody that people... There's like one article about her in a magazine saying, oh, whatever happened to this singer? <laughs> it's like, okay. Um unfortunately like everything it's doing for first one of the things you said before we started recording actually is that this should have been 20 minutes long instead of 40 and yes yeah. this, like it, it takes so long getting to its point that it, it's just frustrating to watch because you can just feel exactly where it's going and her, the second main character is her sister uh, zara who is a doctor and she keeps saying, oh, you're kind of getting a bit too carried away with this. Because that was Well, I, I mean, she thinks her sister's a loser for not, like, going after a career that's not, like, 
I don't know. She doesn't believe in her yeah. as an artist and says, you should really like just give it up. And when she starts becoming, you know, successful, there's a lot of, well, it shouldn't last because you're not that good. There seems to be a lot of, I don't want to say jealousy, maybe a little bit. It's more like, uh, but you're not very good. <laughs> so it seems undeserved. Like, why are people praising Which- you? Which leads to a really weird scene where uh, clearly going that all this like success going to Jasmine's head, she says something like, "Well, you know, I know you don't get it. You're just a doctor, like ju- just a doctor." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. twelve million people watch this show that I'm on, so you know, like clearly what I do is more important. <laughs> I I give people a reason to live. You you just save lives. I give people a reason to live. Uh, is her response actually one of the most weird things about this because one, one of the points in the scene is that her sister's saying hey this this outfit doesn't feel like you because she's wearing this ridiculous low cut thing uh, big thigh yeah. high boots and I was shocked when she went out on stage and played the same sort of quiet uh, sort of romantic song because I'm like this is like a, a little like folksy love song and she's in like head to toe shiny PVC like what <laughs> this is yeah, such I a yeah I mean I never watched those shows like X Factor or um American Idol. I, I just, I'm, I don't know. I'm just not into him. And uh, th- that seems like what this is, though, right? Yeah, kind of. I just, don't they I, kind of do that? Like, just as people get more popular, they get more, like, they look more like the pop star? I, f- I feel like, though, she's, she's, she comes out dressed as if she's about to do, like, uh, like a Madonna performance, right? But instead... Yeah, she she's looks just, like Gaga or something. Yeah, it's an acoustic guitar, and she's just like, hey, girl. Like, that's all it is. And I'm like, <laughs> This, there's a mismatch here. Like you, you're dressed as if you're like a superstar who's going to do some elaborate stage performance with fireworks and yeah. But she only knows one song that she wrote like the day before. <laughs> like it that is true. It, yes. it is just the same song she was singing on the streets, like with her acoustic guitar. Yeah, and that's all it took because everybody gives her a standing ovation. Yes, before she even gets to the chorus, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, is it trying you... to say like things about us, about viewers? How we maybe that this writer doesn't like it when people clap to songs, clap to the beat. Can't hear the music anymore. No. Well, I think there's something <laughs> in there. You've taken it a bit too literal there. As further you went along, uh, there's maybe something in there about fandom and about obsession over something to the point where you almost don't care about what the actual artistic thing in the center is anymore. You just care about being obsessed and having having the person that you follow, that you worship, that you ship, that yeah. you whatever. Uh, that's it. I think more of it's to do with the other side though, where it's about her like fame and her obsession with keeping it and the the the, the drug that it is and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah. and then. Don't get me wrong, the twist at the end of this episode is not, like, as bullshit as some of the other ones because it's... it doesn't change the context of things. And it's actually fairly predictable. So the, predictable. <laughs> the, the, the problem with it is, though, is that it spends so much time building up to it and it is so predictable that yeah. all, every second it takes without actually having the character realise that the twist... You know, because, like, like you said earlier, we have realised this minutes ago that this new famous person that she's like going to like try and stab is obviously going to be her sister. Is is yeah. her sister went, went into the, the the river, got the coin out, and now she's got the success and she stabs her in the back, literally stabs her in the back. She falls over and then t- you know a minute later she finally rolls over and she sees her sister's face and she's like, "No, it's my sister." No. <laughs> oh my god, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like the surgery scene? Do you know, I kind I, I of, laughed a little bit. <laughs> I hated it for how kind of obvious, like, because when she went to the hospital, I said, like, okay, okay, she's going to go into, because her sister's going to be in surgery and she's going to get someone killed because they're all obsessed with clapping for her. And that's, yeah. you know, it's just an obvious thing to do. When the guy who had his, like, his chest open, you could see his heart exposed because he was having open heart surgery. When he started <laughs> clapping while he was still lying there unconscious, I did kind of chuckle at how stupid it was. Yeah. Um, it, <laughs> it made me laugh. I, I didn't mind it. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I just, I feel like this is so like in the in your face with what it's doing and not that twilight zone was always subtle the original you know twilight zone necessarily but i feel like the original twilight zone you know being 25 minutes in length had to mm-hmm. sort of hit its points really quickly 
And maybe if this had been half the length, it would have maybe not not, not hurt as badly the way it was kind of telling its story. Yeah. But if it I was this, the scene in like the the cabin, the log cabin that their family had was just like so unnecessary. Yeah, when she started getting the shakes, and she's there's like multiple like scenes in a montage of her eating noodles. Uh, the last of which I'm pretty sure weren't even cooked properly. They looked like they were still kind of hard. Was like mm. the bits of those that were like coming out of her mouth looked like they were not soft. Uh, yes. Which is, if there's one thing that's universal about food, is that noodles should be soft. <laughs> it's just or cool. al dente. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a rough one. It's. I feel like there's very little merit. Obviously, I mean, Johnny Smollett is a solid actor. And in fact, even the director of this episode, I mean, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with this director, but uh, Anna Lily. Yeah, Annie, Anna Lily Amapur is the director of A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, which is a fantastic little movie, which I highly recommend if you like. Oh, the nice, vampire one? Yeah, it's a black and white vampire movie. It's. Uh, you know, I started watching it and I never finished it. It's, it's a movie that and it's the, the directions the whole movie like there's not really much to the plot or anything like that but just the compositions the black and white imagery uh the body language just all that sort of stuff it, it's just a wonderful like 90 minute experience too bad she had to make one of these yeah and it's not the first time i've seen her do a bad episode of a tv show and i don't necessarily blame her like i'm sure this is you know because at this point like because i've not liked the direction in just about any of these twilight zone episodes of this new show but I, I, I can't really blame any of the directors at this point because clearly a style was established early on because they've all stuck to the same style. They all feel like they've yeah. got the same visual style. So I can't really blame the directors <laughs> in individual episodes, after, at least after the first one. Maybe the first director I can blame because you started this. You you <laughs> you did this. And then the rest of the directors are all copying you and I hate it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe the style was selected by a committee. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe about the writer's room or something, or, the, you know, they had one DP on board to make those choices early on, and yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what we ended up with from that, that point on. Um, yeah, I, I certainly didn't like this one that much. I, I thought the themes and the messaging, like, were, were okay, um, but it was just the, after she gets to the, after she throws the coin into the water, and then goes to her cabin it's just so obvious what is going to happen next and it feels like it's another 20 minutes from there yeah i don't Maybe know if it actually less, is but, but it, it feels, it it feels yeah it may not actually literally be 20 minutes left of the episode at that point but it feels like it and i think the first half even though it's technically better because it's just a simple idea which does feel twilight zone ask in terms of its mm -hmm. premise I think it's, it suffers because it's so one note. Like, we get it after the first time they start clapping, and then there's, like, multiple scenes of people chasing her as she's jogging and clapping at the second performance and clapping at this, clapping at that. It, it, like, we get it. You know, yeah. we, you know we, we got the point <laughs> relatively quickly. Uh, it just keeps going. There's, there's no new twist on it. There's no, like... Uh, and, and, like, I don't know. Um... Like, I, I guess more stuff like when she's in the taxi cab and the, the driver like starts clapping and not instead of driving and the car starts yeah. swerving. Like maybe more fun stuff like that where it was like, okay, here's the effect of it. And maybe that's where the hospital scene, while kind of silly the way they do it, was at least there was a good idea in there of like, okay, what does what this disrupt? What does she like, yeah. you know, what what does like the fame of this person distract important people from doing, uh, you know, so. I don't know what the message is for that, for that, but it was, I, I thought the hospital scene was kind of fun. Uh, yeah. It's good to have a laugh. I, I I guess it's saying something along the lines of like don't don't you know don't let your obsession with like famous people or or whatever you're into get in the Distract way of you. important things. But I don't know if I've ever considered the idea that like a a surgeon who's worked their life to become a surgeon then does a poor job because they're too busy reading the gossip pages. <laughs> like, well, know. they did it in Seinfeld. Forrest Whitaker, like, gets distracted by the song Desperado. No, Witchy Woman. It's <laughs> <laughs> not able to finish his surgery. Uh, but I love Seinfeld. I'm not so sure I would read that as a <laughs> an accurate portrayal, necessarily. Well, uh, at least I would scene. hope not. I would hope not, anyway. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this is a really weak episode. And sadly, I think the first three were the highest rated. On IMDb, oh, no. the averages. <laughs> That's not good. I, th I think we're pretty uh, in the downhill from here. Uh, yeah. More or less. 
man, it sucks. I wish I had more to say about this episode, but I really don't. I mean, it's kind of a simple, like, we get we get the premise. There's not really a whole lot exceptional in the episode that I can, like, point out and, and say good things. And there's not a whole lot of negative stuff either, except for maybe the obvious ending and how long it takes to get there. So I don't know. I don't really have much to say. Yeah. It's it's not very good. Um the performances are okay. I like seeing Paul F. Tompkins and uh what's his name? Thomas Lennon, the guy from Reno nine one one. Mm. Those are both very hilarious people. And um it was fun to see him, but not the not my favorite episode, I'm afraid. <laughs> no. Uh I I have very little to add myself. It's just kind of a slog to get through and never really offers anything that inspires or engages or anything else yeah. so unfortunately we uh have another negative in the column for the new twilight zone a show with very little positives thus far um i mean i was so i was sort of being positive on the other ones but yeah this one i don't know it's not good it's not for me like a rage out come on don't hold back uh, i can't i'm canadian <laughs> too nice <laughs> go on call it trash go on call it trash it's not it's not garbage it's just it's recycled it's recyclable it's as close as I can get well uh I feel like I feel like Tara's making up for that dodgy Canadian joke from two episodes ago <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> that's just what real Canada's like damn it can't Not for this, this hockey nonsense. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, my favorite Canadian movie might be Ginger Snaps, and I I laugh every time I watch it because uh, you know it's, it's shot in like set in Canada, and like every time it cuts to a street outside the girls' houses, there's always like kids playing hockey in the street, and I'm like, yeah, that's accurate. Canada, <laughs> from my memory, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. I, I was a little disappointed that the person that grabbed the coin at the end was Jordan Peele. I wanted to see it pass on to somebody else. I mean, yeah, instead of narrating it at the end, he just picks up the coin, puts it in his pocket, and kind of goes, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, who's going to be? Oh, it's Jordan Peele. It's just our narrator. Hmm. He the already re- has fame. Well, I, I guess that's kind of the joke. Maybe it would have worked better as a joke if it was a, a legit cameo from someone who was unexpected. Like, let's, let's say like, Keanu Reeves like walked in and picked up the coin. And they'd be like, oh, that's how Keanu Reeves got famous. He's got the coin. Or like, yeah, yeah. Or somebody who's like on on the way down who used to be famous, a has been. <laughs> someone like Travolta. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to like convince someone to like, take that cameo when the implication is what your career. What if it's beauty? <gasps> everything's better with episode. yeah. Everything's better with Gary Busey. I'd give this episode a ten if Gary Busey walked into the scene at the end. No question. <laughs> All right, there you go. That's Ovation, episode four of the That's new season. That's how we fix Ovation. You can, you can give us an Ovation if you wish uh, by liking and subscribing. Uh, like is really important on YouTube. Uh, it lets us, helps us out a lot because it lets YouTube recommend us out more and um, more people will find us. Uh, you can, of course, also support us financially, can't you, Tara? That's right. Um, if you like what we do and you want to support us and support the channel, why not check out our Patreon page? It's patreon.com slash mileplustv. And if you donate as low as $1 per month, you will get access to a library of films, of B-film, B-movies that we have reviewed just for you, the patrons. And um, yeah. Thank you. Uh- I would watch a phrase and just a touch there. It sounds like we actually we're actually offering the films like a streaming service. The way you said it, <laughs> like no, you get a library of these movies, these B movies, <laughs> <laughs> our reviews of these yes. movies. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I just, I don't, I'm just, I'm expecting this. Some like someone signs up to Patreon and is angry after like ten minutes and like messages me all like, well, I thought I was getting a library of movies. What's all this shit with <laughs> so just hard more to reviews? find stuff too? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you'll get a detailed explanation of the films that we've watched. So I thought I fi- finally <laughs> found a copy of Transfers 4 streaming from Patreon. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to return to the Transfers franchise soon. Soon, not next time. There is consistency if yes. <laughs> in quality. Nah, the fourth one was a dip. E- yeah, even the, the stars on record are saying that four and five are uh, a bit of a regret 
and his oh, career. But five is next for us. Hope for the best. Hope for the best. Uh, so yes, uh, that is that's pretty much it. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore sports for channel updates. And thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. And the Twilight Zone.